Hey everyone, as you can see I bought Ace Attorney Trilogy, I was really looking forward to playing it, really, for a long long time, but I never had any Game Boy, DS or anything like that, so couldn't, unfortunately I had to turn off the music, background music, because I'm pretty sure YouTube would send me a strike for it, so... I'd rather turn it off right now. We still have uh, sound effects. Hope you'll be as happy to see this as of me. Let's play a new game. Ooh! Phoenix Wright is Ace Attorney, Justice for All, and Trials and Tribulations. Um, to 1, to 2, to 4. So I guess this is the first one. Episode 1, the first turnabout. Okay, yeah, play the first turnabout, first turnabout, and already have a, an achievement, first steps, nice, gasp, gasp. Damn it, why me? I can't get caught, not like this. I have to find someone to pin this on. Someone like him. And make it look like he did it. August start, 9.47 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby number two. Boy, am I nervous. Right. Oh, he yeah, Shiv. I'm glad I made it in time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It talks a lot about you. And your client as well. Um, thanks? Actually, it's because I owe him, I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean you knew the defendant before this case? Yeah, actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. One of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over. My life, everything, it's all over. Is that your client screaming over there? Yeah, it's him. Jeff, despair. Oh, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna die. It sounds like he wants to die. Um, yeah. Nick. Hey, uh, hey there, Larry. Dude, I'm so guilty. Tell them I'm guilty. Give me the death sentence. I am afraid to die. What? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over. I, I'm finished. Finished. I can't live in a world without her. I can't. Who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Oh, Nick, you gotta tell me. Who took my baby away? Mm, the person responsible for your girlfriend's death? The newspapers say it was you. My name is Fe Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sub dating her. Larry Butts. My best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying, when something smells, it's usually the Butts. In the 22 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself in, himself in trouble. One thing I can say though, it's usually not his fault, he just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. That and I owe him one, which is why I took the case, to clear his name. And that's just what I'm going to do. August start. 10 a.m. District Court courtroom number two. 
Art now is in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Bot. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Uh, the um, defense is ready, Your Honor. <clears throat> Mr. Wright? This is your first trial, is it not? Y yes, Your Honor. I'm a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a huge charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. Th thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your, ascertain your readiness. Yes, Your Honor. <clears throat> Hand shaking, eyesight fading. The test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please, the name, please state the name of the defendant in this case. Um, defendant Larry Butts. The defendant will that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. All right, just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next, next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? Oh, I knew there was this one. Glad I read the case report cover to cover so many times. It's... wait, oh... No, no way, I forgot, I'm drawing a total blank here. Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name? Oh, the victim... of course I know the victim's name. Um, just forgot, uh, temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming in. Look, the victim's name is listed in the court record. Just press tap to check it at any time. So it's uh, right button. Uh, not it. That. Not, that. Not it. Oh, oh, nice. Cindy Stone, age 22, the victim in this case, a model, she lived in an apartment by herself. Remember to check it off and do it for me, please, I'm begging you. Mr. Wright, who is the victim in this case? Cindy Stone. Um, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Alright, now tell me, what was the cause of that? She died because she was hit with a blunt object. She was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor. Because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well then. First a question for the prosecution. Mr. Payne... Yes, Your Honor. As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what that object was? The murder weapon was the statue of the Pinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. Statue. A statue in the shape of the Pinker. It's rather heavy. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in the court. You stop to check the court record frequently. Mr. Pai, the prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Butts, to the stand. Mm, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help you your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to prosecution later, so be ready. I just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Wait.
Oh, oh, Lara gets excited. This could be bad. Um, Mr. Bot. Oh, wait. Like. Mr. Bot, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Yeah, sorry, wrong. Hey, watch it, buddy! We are great together. We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra and Mark Antony. Um, didn't they all die? I wasn't dumped. She just wasn't taking my phone calls or seeing it, ever. What's it to you anyway? Mr. Bats, what you describe is generally what we mean by dumb. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean one of them? Lies, all of it lies, I don't believe a word. Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Uh, the victim apparently arrived home from Paris on Thursday, the day before the murder. Okay. Hmm, indeed, she appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude, no way. The victim was a model but didn't have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. What? Daddies? Sugar? Yeah, older man who gave her money and kid. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude. We can clearly see what kind of woman this Mrs. Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Bot, what do you think of her now? Right. I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I? Should I use the objection? Oh, let's try it. My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant to this case. Ooh. Dude, Nick, what do I mean irrelevant? That cheating she dog. I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna drop that. Yeah, and when I meet her, in the, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused motive is clear to everyone. You squad. Oh boy, this is not looking good. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Mm. Well, did you or did you not? Ha, ha. Well, maybe I did and maybe I didn't. Oh, he went. What do I do? I know I sent him a signal. Tell the truth. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was there. I went. Order. Well, Mr. Bot, do chill. He wasn't home, man. So like. I didn't see her. Your Honor, the defendant is lying. Lying? The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Order. Ordering the card. Mr. Payne. The prosecution may call its witness. Yes, your honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was sending newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sawit to the stand. Mr. Sawit, you sell newspaper sub subscriptions. Is this correct? Oh yeah, oh yeah, newspapers, yeah. 
Mr. Savet, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Witnessed account. I was going door to door, selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I do. he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it's strange, I looked inside the apartment, then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly, it was 1 p.m. The man who ran was without a doubt the defendant sitting right over there. Hmm. Lara, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? The runner. At the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, your honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. David used was one of those. Your honor, I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. Now, Mr. Wright. Uh, ye yes, your honor. You may begin your cross-examination. Ross examination, your honor. All right, right. The, the, the real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why you exposed the lies in the testimony the witnesses gave? Lies? What? He was lying? Your client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? How do I prove he's not? You hold the key, it's in the e evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness testimony. Then, once you've found the contradicting ev evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face. Um. Okay, open the court record with tap, then point out contradictions in the testimony. I was going door to door to Sonic when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. Hold it. The phone in her apartment wasn't working. Yes, I mean, no, no, it wasn't, right? But you said you didn't go into the apartment, or did you? Oh, oh that I can explain that. There was a cordless phone on a shelf in the entr entranceway. I reached inside and tried using that to call. And that phone wasn't working, correct? What happened next? I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly, it was 1 p.m. The man who ran was without a doubt the defendant, sitting right over there, that's all of it. There must be a contradiction in there somewhere, examine the court record. Ah, found it. Time of death. It's between 4 and 5 p.m. and he said he was there 
at around 1 p.m. Okay, let's present in the autopsy report. Objection! We found the body at 1 p.m. You're sure? Yes, it was 1 p.m. for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the, aut the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of that at some time after 4 p.m. There was nobody to no body to find 1 p.m. How do you explain this three hour gap? Uh, oh, that, oh, uh, objection. This is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Sully, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? Uh, 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 gee, that's a really good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. Each one and their whole story falls apart. Mm hmm. Would you care to give your testimony again? You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a tape program. Nope, mate. Why I thought it was 1 p.m. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. Hmm, I see. You heard the voice saying the time on a tape program. Mr. Wright, you may cross examine the witness. Right. You know what to do. I've got this one. Um, yeah. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time, there was a voice saying the time, probably coming from the television. And here we go, present, and blackout record. Objection! Hold it right there. The prosecution said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery, and this record proves it. You couldn't have hired a television or a video. I will, um... The defense was the point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sowit? No, I find quite puzzling myself quite... Wait, I remember now! Mr. Sowit? The court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credi credibility. That and you seem that and you seem rather destroyed. My apologies, Your Honor. It, it, it must have been the shock of finding the body. Well, very well, Mr. Sowit. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. Actually, I didn't hear the time, I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapons, the killer used it to the victim. That must have been what I saw. You saw a clock? I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly.
All dead. A table clock. Was there a clock at the scene? This is the first I've heard of it. Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. No. He hit it with a statue in the shape of the finger. Uh, wait just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock, it was this statue. Now how is this supposed to be a clock? What are you with your objections and your evidence? Just who do you think you are? Let's answer the question, Mr. Sawit. Hey, I, I saw it there, okay? That's clock. Your honor, if I may. Yes, Mr. Payne. As the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch, you just steal it and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with the testimony now? Your Honor, there is a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Hmm, indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he... went into the apartment and knew the victim. Knew the victim. Tell me, isn't it true that you knew the victim? In fact, you were one of her sugar daddies. Be frank with us, Mr. Sawit. Hmm. Frank? I'm always frank. Your Honor, we have complete records of the victim's relationships. Mr. Frank Sawit does not appear anywhere. Huh? Oh, really? Please, Mr. Wright. It's ha, the best respond you can muster up. Try to refrain from making of the cough accusations in the future. Yes, Your Honor, let me think this over. The witness knew it was a clock because he went into the apartment. Okay. You were inside the apartment the day of the murder. Oh, yeah, prove it. Prove I went in there. I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. You struck her with the clock and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. Ordering the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Savit. The sun must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable since, since the... Oh, wait. I... Uh, turn the music even lower. Sorry. Understandable since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. Well, wh what's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless? Just look at that witness's face. And would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I, 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 I never looked at the clock. I heard no. I mean, I saw. I. Oh, mm. the fun? Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up! I hate you. It was him, I tell you. I saw him. He killed her and she. He should burn. Burn, give him death. What the hell? Order. Order in the court, I say. Your Honor, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. Ra. Your Honor. You claim the sound the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I'd better think of it through carefully. Your honor, mm, the sound Mr. Savit heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear if you simply... Oh my fucking god.
Try sounding the clock. Let's set the clock now. Here in this card. You don't know where I have the clock. I asked the court to listen very carefully. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker after all. So, we heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's... 11.25. You can see this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between the, what Mr. Sowit heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Sowit, try to talk your way out of this one. <laughs> you forgot one thing. Oh, what's he talking about now? Why it may seem like that clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case. He's right, how am I going to prove that? Damn it, I was so close. He's right, it seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Uh, yes, your honor, this means I cannot let you indict the witness, unfortunately. This ends the cross-examination of Mr. Sa Frank Sowit. I come all the way down here to testify and look what happens. You treat me like a criminal, a criminal. You lawyers are all slime. I almost had him. Sorry, Larry, I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. Not so fast, Mr. Sowit. Mia? I mean, Chief? Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. But Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes, but that doesn't mean you can still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time doubting the clock. Assume the clock was three hours slow and think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason and you'll have your proof. Right, right. Can you think of a reason as why the clock would be three hours slow? From party. Yep. Wait, maybe I can prove it. You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it right. Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to stop our disclaim? Of course. There is a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Ha! Tough words, let's see you pull this one. Let's see this evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is 9 hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. The clock wasn't 3 hours slow, it was 9 hours fast. The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in her apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you Mr. Solid, or should I say Mr. Did it? Oh my god, he threw a tantrum. Order, order, I say. Well, this case has certainly turned out differently than we all expect. Mr. Payne, your witness, 
He, uh, she was arrested and has been taken away, your honor. Very well. Mr. Wright. Yes, your honor. I have to say, I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a de defense so quickly and find the cul true culprit at the same time. Thank you, your honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but this card finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts. Not guilty. And with that, this card is adjourned. Ooh, half case. It turns out that Frank saw it was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day. When Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Summit let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Blastered, Mr. Summit grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. Ooh, I still can't believe we won. Right, good job in there. Congratulations. Thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. Not at all, not at all. You fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since I've seen a tray on, on such a satisfying note. I've never seen the Chief looking this happy. If he's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. Yeah, imagine. <laughs> My life is over. Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Oh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good. Wait, no. I mean bad, 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 bad. Larry, you're innocent. The place is closed. But, but my Cindy Windy is gone, man. Gone forever. Larry, she was... Never mind. Congratulations, Harry. Harry? Yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts. Innocent. <laughs> Thanks, I really owe you one. I won't forget this ever. Let's celebrate dinner, movie, my treat. Oh no, I couldn't. Hey, I was the one who got you out of the hook. Oh, hey. Here, take this. It's a present. Present for me? Wait, wasn't it the evidence that Actually, I made this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. R really? You you made this? Well, thank you. I keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick. Can you believe it? I was so into that chick. And, and she was just playing me for a fool. Don't that make you want to just cry? Larry... Are you so sure? Excuse me? I think she thought quite a lot of you in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me. Okay. No, I'm not just sympathizing. Sympathizing. Really? He's in the right, right? Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Uh, oh, yeah, right. What the heck is he talking about? Check this out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't just some champ to her. Huh? What about that clock? This is the clock you made for her, Larry. And she took it with her when she traveled. Whatever. She probably just needed a clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take traveling. Well, make of it what you will. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, William? Thanks! Hope that made him feel a little better. Right? 
I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People too, we never really know if our cl clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right? Listen, learn, grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done, shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, so, how about the dinner? On me? We'll drink a toast. Two innocent but. Yeah! Oh, speaking of Harry, you were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him? Uh, yeah, part, at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? And so, my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay us. Unless you count the clock he gave me. I didn't know it then, but that clock was soon going to be at the center of another, another incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I, I wouldn't be able to keep. The end. Okay, we have another episode unlocked. Yep, save my progress. Thanks guys for watching. We're gonna be playing Turnabout Sisters in the next episode. Hope you had atmosphere as much. Sorry, my voice is already giving up after over 40 minutes of talking around the clock. And I hope different voices like it. Come back for another episode. See ya.